But a couple hours later, church was done. The kids came back to my house. They always come to my house after church. Um, I don't cook. I don't really know why they come. I don't, I really, it is not my gift, okay? I could prophesy to the chicken in the package, but it still doesn't cook itself, okay? I don't, it is not my gift, okay? I used to actually really hate reading Proverbs 31. <laughs> I mean, she's a tough chick. I mean, you know, she's really amazing. But there's this one little part in there that says she gets up before the sun and feeds her household. And I was like, yeah, I'm out. I can't, I can't do this, okay? But then one day I found this awesome line right after there. It says, she brings her food from afar. And I realized that's takeout. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? That's takeout. I can be a virtuous woman. I can be a Proverbs 31 woman. I know how to order takeout. Hallelujah. Some of you just got set free, I can tell. So we had ordered takeout that day, and we were waiting, and my, my daughter-in-law laid my grandson down on the, on the floor to change his clothes. She put, put a blanket down, and she laid him down, and for the first time in his life, he didn't cry. First time in his life that when she laid him down, he didn't cry. So the whole family looked at him like, oh, Lucas isn't crying. And as we watched him, he rolled over. So his mommy ran and picked him up and looked him in the eye, and he gave her a big smile. Everybody say, Debar Shalom. See, when we start learning to listen to the voice of God, God will give us an open vision. God will give us a capacity to address things, to speak to things, not only for our life that we need breakthrough in, but God will also give us strategies for other. There is no more transformative thing that happens when somebody encounters the presence of God and then they begin, they begin to hear God's voice. It unlocks, it unlocks things. How are we doing on time? Is Jesus coming? Okay. Jesus is coming, gotta hurry. I'm gonna tell you my favorite prophetic story, favorite of all time, just to show you how one prophetic word, let me say this, one word from God can change anything. One word from God can change everything. So I go and I minister at a place called Mercy ministry, Mercy Multiplied. It's a home for young women between the ages of 13 and 35 that just have had, you know, horrible things happen in their lives and they just need some help. And it's a six month program free of charge, free of charge. So if you know anybody that want, needs to needs help, spirit filled, amazing program. And my husband and I spend four weeks a year going into the different Mercy homes and prophesying over these young women because we found that the word of the Lord is one of the most transformational um, things that God can bring to somebody. So I was ministering, and there was a young girl. This is a number of years ago. There was a young girl. Her name was Caitlin. If you've heard me share on the prophetic, you probably heard the story of Caitlin because it's my favorite. It's near and dear to my heart. But Caitlin was probably about 15 years old. And when she was, she, I, I had called three or four young ladies to come up and stand. And when she was standing there, she had pulled a hoodie up over her head, and she had taken her hair and pulled it into her face like a curtain in front of her face because there was so much shame on her life. She didn't believe that God could possibly have anything good to say to her. And so when it came her time, I parted her hair and looked in there. And I said, can I minister to you? And she went, it really inspires you. <laughs> so I laid my hands on her and I just began to, to pray, to prophesy over her. And this is what the Lord said. The Lord said, my daughter, I've given you a brilliant mind. I've given you a huge capacity to learn. The Lord says, and when you get done with this program here, I'm going to accelerate your learning process. I'm going to catch you up in your schooling. And you're going to go to school, you're going to go to university on scholarship. 
and you're gonna earn multiple degrees because what I do through you is gonna improve the quality of life for many individuals. I want you to know when she heard that, she didn't smile, she didn't cry, she didn't respond, nothing. She just went and sat down. But something happened to her when the word of the Lord went forth. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. And that word went in and penetrated all the lies, all the shame, all the garbage that she had lived with. And it made her believe something different about herself. Years later, I found out this story. She was in the program. She had been physically, sexually, and verbally abused by her own parents. When she went to school, the authorities got alerted, so they just pulled her out of school from that point forward. She could write her name. That was about it. She's 15 years old now, illiterate. So when they come into the Mercy program, they try to help them get caught up in their learning while they're in their transformation process. But just the day before I got there, they'd had a meeting with the educational director that said to Nancy, Nancy Alcorn, the leader, they said, no matter what we do with this young lady, it seems like she is completely incapable of learning. No matter what we do, she seems incapable of learning. And so Nancy said, well, let's work on just getting her healed then. Let's focus on her spirit. Let's get her healed. Let's get her born again. Let's, let's let that work happen. Then we'll worry about her education later. So in comes the prophet. I've given you a brilliant mind. I've given you a huge capacity to learn. Opposite. Come on, the voice of the Lord will speak opposite sometimes. So when the word came to her, it penetrated that. When she graduated from Mercy, Mercy helped her get placed with new parents because her old parents went to jail where they belonged. But her new parents adopted her and they were rocket scientists. <laughs> like literally rocket scientists. Very committed to her education. So Mercy and these new parents partnered together, sent her to a school for remedial learners, got her caught up. And in 18 months, she went from being illiterate to graduating from high school. Because God had given her a brilliant mind. After that, they sent her to community college. And after a year and a half at community college, she learned how to write essays. She learned how to take tests. After a year and a half, she sat for the SATs and scored, no lie, the highest score that has ever been scored in the state of Tennessee on an SAT test. Three years after illiteracy. Why? Because God said, I've given you a brilliant mind. She was given a full-ride scholarship to Middle Tennessee State, where she graduated four years later with a double major in biology and German. And after she graduated, her professor put her up for the Fulbright Scholarship, which is probably one of the most prestigious scholarships in America. She won the Fulbright Scholarship, and she went overseas and studied in Germany, in German, with a team of neuroscientists because as an undergraduate, she had detected something that forms on the brain that contributes to the development of dementia and Alzheimer's. Remember God said, she's gonna to contribute to the quality of, hu of human life. Let me just say this, this girl was a throwaway according to culture. Come on, she had no hope, she had no future. But when Jesus speaks to you and gives you a word, he always brings a hope and a future. She got back after Germany, married one of her cute professors, which is a miracle after you've been sexually abused. She went on to Harvard Medical School and I think graduated last year with a Harvard medical degree. 10 years after complete illiteracy. 
because the word of the Lord said, I've given you a brilliant mind. Come on, can we thank the Lord for that? Can we thank the Lord for that? Amen? Transformed lives. Transformed lives because it opens things up when you hear the word of the Lord.